we want to welcome all those people that are now joining us from the broadcast of Destiny Church Wakefield. We're glad that you tuned in whenever you're in the area. Come and see us and why not write us an email and tell us how God spoke to you through the message. We're glad that you decided to check out Destiny Church Wakefield this morning. I want you to turn in your Bible, if you would, please, to, Gen to Romans chapter 4, fourth chapter of Romans, and we want to talk to you this morning about one word, and it's called promise. Promise. We sang earlier a hymn that said, Great is thy faithfulness. What's that about? Promise. He has made a promise concerning you. Do you know that? Do you know the promises that God made about you? There's so many. This is a book of promises. Many people in the world in which we're living don't keep their promise. Maybe you haven't kept all your promises. Or maybe you're really ticked off with somebody who didn't keep their promise to you. And you got yourself in a right little miserable pity party just because somebody didn't keep their promise. Well, all I've got to say to you is this. Don't start judging somebody else for having not made the promise to you, kept their promise to you, unless you've kept every single promise you ever made to somebody else. And I want to say there's only one person that's ever made the promise and kept every single one of them. And he's the one that we love today and worship today. His name is Jesus. Amen? <laughs> promise. Now in Romans chapter 4, we're reminded in the Romans here about a man called Abraham and his wife, Sarah, who God made to them a promise. The promise was, you're going to have a baby. In fact, you're not just going to have a baby. You're going to have so many babies, you won't be able to number them. They're going to be more than the sand and the grains of sand on the, on the shore. You're going to be more than the stars in the sky. You're going to have a whole bunch of promises. And so they waited. They waited and they waited and they waited. And then uh, the time went past so long they waited so long that it went beyond what was naturally possible <laughs> he got to be 90 now we're not going to be able to have any babies because we're too old there's some people here and God's made some promises to you maybe some of you watching us by the broadcast God's made some promises to you and you think the time has come and gone and you're beyond that promise being fulfilled in your life. I've, I'm just a messenger today, and I've got a message that says to you, it ain't over till it's over. And it's not too late until God says it's too late. And you're still alive, aren't you? You're still breathing. You're still walking. You're still talking. You're still thinking. You're in your right mind. That's why you're here. And who knows, this afternoon, tomorrow, this next week, next month, could be the time when that promise starts to get fulfilled in your life. God made a promise over our church. There's been some bits of that promise that have been fulfilled, but there's much more about that promise that needs to be fulfilled to us as a church. There's much more for us to go for. There's much more for us to live for. There's much more for us to hope for. I believe that I was born to see revival. I believe that was a prophetic promise to my mother all those years ago. And I have sensed the witness of that in me for all the years that I have conscious memory. I've been serving God now full time for 40 and three quarters years. That's an awful long time. And all that time I've held a promise on the inside of me that one day, somehow, some way, I was going to witness, be involved in a great revival that is going to see swoopings of people. Woo! Just enormous ma masses of people not only coming to Jesus Christ, but seeing his church rise up in great strength. The Bible talks about in, in the Psalms, and I love this picture, the, the church is going to be raised up like the mountain of the Lord, and people are going to swarm to it. That's the promise that I've held. Why am I doing what I'm doing today? Why have I so able to just keep on giving and giving and giving and giving of my life, laying it down through difficult times, through setbacks, through circumstances that haven't always worked out together so easily. Why? It's because of something called promise. God is a promise keeper. Whatever he said to you, he will do it. God does not break his promises. People do 
We, of course, need to be very clear about what we think God has promised, which is why it's always very good to go back to the book when it comes to promises. Sometimes we get outlandish promises that are manufactured in our mind. I'm not talking about the manufactured m promises that you might just have as a wish list before God and, uh, and you think, oh, Lord, I, I'm looking for that wish list. You know, I want a holiday home in the Bahamas. And you think about it so much that you think God promised you a holiday home in the Bahamas. Well, if you get your wish, remember me when you come into your kingdom. But until then, we're going to start off with the promises that are in here because there are so many promises in here. There's promises about forgiveness. Amen? I will forgive you. I will choose to put your sin in the deepest seed. I'm quoting Bible verses here. And choose never to remember those sin against you anymore. That's a promise that God made that he wouldn't judge you for sin that's been forgiven. Hallelujah. He made a promise that he would never leave us and never forsake us and he never has and he's with us right now by his Holy Spirit. He made a promise that he would protect us. The Bible says that God's favor is like a shield that surrounds us and he would help us in the trouble that come at night and he would protect us. In, in fact, he even said no weapon that's going to be formed against you will prosper. Promise. He made a promise about our provision. He said, I am the Jehovah Jireh. I will meet all your needs according to my riches which are in Christ Jesus. Promise. He said, I am the Lord who heals you. Promise. He said, I will make a way for you where there seems to be no other way. Promise. 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 The Bible is just a book of promises. Now, Abraham, he was probably one of the greatest promise, or had one of the greatest promises ever made to him, and he thought it was all over. But God had got other things in mind. The problem with that promise for Abraham is he even then started to try and work out the promise as to see how he could work it out for himself. And if you remember, he went and had a, a relationship with a, another woman that he wasn't supposed to have done and produced a child and thought, well, this is going to be the way the promise is going to work out. I want to say to you, I, I want to put a timely warning to all of us. Don't put your hand in where God's hand should be. Let the hand of the Lord deliver you his promise. Let the miracle of God produce. You can get a result, but it's going to be a man-made result. And man-made results have a problem of, of failing and only just being that. But when you get a God result, I'm going to tell you, I'd rather have a God result than a thousand men results. Now, in verse 13 of Romans chapter 4, we pick up the story and it said, it was not through law that Abraham and his offspring received the promise that they would be the heir of the world but through the righteousness that comes by faith you know the story of abraham you know that in the end god fulfilled his promises god always fulfills his promises and abraham he he thought that well what's going to happen here and his wife particularly if you remember his now this is not having a go at you ladies you ladies are really wonderful aren't you there you go but his wife, like her, she laughed. Don't be ridiculous. Maybe you've even done that over this last week or so about some things in your own life. You've said, how, how ridiculous. Listen, nothing's ridiculous when it comes to God. The God who spoke and creation was formed. The God who organized all things. The God who sent Jesus to die on a cross. The God who said, the blood of Jesus Christ, God's Son, cleanses you from all of your sin. The God who spoke through Jesus when he was on earth and a dead man came out of a grave and a disciple as doubting as Peter was able to walk on water and he was able to go and touch a leper and he was made clean and so on and so on and so on. The God who keeps his promises is watching. The Bible says this in a place. He's watching over his word his promise to perform it another verse of the bible says no word that came out of god's mouth will return to him void but he will it will accomplish that for which it was sent so the promise that was made for over your life and over our church it will be fulfilled all as we've got to do is do what abraham did so let's find out about it in verse 16 it says this promise comes by faith 
this promise comes by faith so that it may be by grace and may be guaranteed to all of Abraham's offsprings, not only to those who are of the law, but also those who are of the faith of Abraham. He is the father of us all. As it's written, I have made you a father of many nations. He is our father in the sight of God, in whom he believed, the God who gives life to the dead and calls things that are not as though they are. It started off in the verse 16, says, the promise comes by faith. We used to sing a song, we walk by faith. Each step by faith. To become a Christian and to follow God is a walk of faith. It's not show me and then I'll see. It's tell me and then I'll believe. And after I believe, then I'll see. There's a pattern, there's a progress that we've really got to get sorted out in this fact-based, evidence-based world in which we live. Some of those things work for some things, but they don't work as far as the Christian life is concerned. Faith is the only thing that we've got as our guarantee, as our certainty, the promise of God. It's an issue of faith. Don't try and become a Christian and then say, well, I'm looking for the evidence, I'm looking for the evidence. You become a Christian by faith. You receive Jesus Christ by faith. You read the Bible with faith. You believe for the promises to be fulfilled by faith. It's a faith issue. How's your faith? Now, the problem of it is for some Christians, many Christians, is their faith is very weak. So they're in faith on Sunday and they say, yes. And then a little something happens in the circumstances of life on Monday and they go, oh no. And then they come to the prayer meeting on Tuesday and they go, yes. And then something happens in the circumstances of life on Wednesday and they go, no. Now the Bible's got something to say about that yes, no, yes, no, yes, no person. The Bible says it is double-mindedness and a double-minded man should not, I'm quoting the Bible, should not expect to receive anything from the Lord. We've got to say yes on Sunday and Monday and Tuesday and Wednesday. We've got to say yes in July and yes in August and yes in December. We've got to say yes when we get a tax rebate. We've got to say yes when we get a, a raise or a promotion at work. And we've got to say yes when something really doesn't go quite like we thought it should. But we say, I'm saying yes. Lord, yes, because I trust in your promises, because you who have never failed and cannot fail. He cannot fail. Success is an attribute of God. His ultimate ability to be able to do is an attribute of God. He doesn't know what failure is all about. He doesn't get tired. He doesn't have plan B. The word of the Lord stands for ever throughout all. All generations, heaven and earth will pass away, but his word will abide forever. It is because it's unshakable, it's unmovable, it's never going to have a bad season. It's going to be fruitful in this season, in that season, in whatever season comes. The word of God is sure. We've got to refresh our brains and our thinking and our emotions and our inner man with some faith because this promise comes by faith now if we go to verse 18 it says against all hope now what does that mean it means for Abraham he thought it was finished right it was like except for the fact that he wasn't able he wasn't ready to say it's over against all hope it's like I don't know how this is going to be but it says against all hope. We've been like that as, as a church sometimes. You've been like that in your life. There's been times in your life where you thought, <clears throat> I'm never going to win through. I'm never going to be able to slay this financial giant. I'm never going to be able to get out of debt. I'm never going to find a husband. I'm never going to find a wife. My children are never going to come through. I'm never going to get a job. This sickness is going to kill me. You've been through all of those sort of things. But I just want to say to you, listen, it's never over till it's over, until God says that it's over. I remember as a church, we had a, a promise, a prophetic word came to us many, many, many years ago, said, I've got a building for you. Some of you were around in those days. From the hundreds of people that come and gather on a Sunday morning now, there, there was a time when there was a, just some dozens of us, and a prophetic word came to us and says, I've got a building for you. 
it was a promise <laughs> and I thought great it's going to happen I thought it was going to happen that week I, I gave God a month and it took a year or two or three or four or five or six or seven or eight or nine or ten but God still came through with his promise Amen. hallelujah that promise that promise sent to us by a prophet who knew of our church he was in Taiwan at the time that he wrote me an email I've still got the email he said God has got a building for you it's going to be an old sanatorium or something like that it's going to have brown chocolate doors it's going to look lovely on the inside and not so great on the outside there's been a man who stood against you and that's why you've not been able to get a building but I'm going to turn the heart of that man around to help you I haven't got time to go into the details of that, but every single part of that prophecy came true for us. And we're here today to give testimony to the fact that God keeps His promises. Not only that, a prophetic word came to us those years ago and said, you've sown and 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 sown, but a day is coming when fish are going to start jumping into your boat. And I remember during those years we were sowing we were doing evangelistic outreaches some of you will remember every month we used to do a thing called time to discover and we'd put on the most elaborate evangelistic seeker sensitive type something that was going to attract all these hundreds of people in and nobody came but we still did it and I used to talk to the team that were working on those time to discover say come on let's go and imagine that there's going to be hundreds of people out there and it was the same old lot you lot <laughs> but the day came because God keeps his promises when somebody came in I remember that there's a lady sat down here today I'll not embarrass her with her name that she came in during that time and she said uh I've been meaning to come to your church for a long time and pulled out a leaflet. We put it through her door six months before. And she still had the leaflet. She came in. Got herself really connected with God. Brought her neighbor who gave her life to Jesus Christ. And those are two precious women sat in our congregation this morning. God always keeps his promises. And that day came when people started to jump in our boat. And we said, where did you come from? And they said, oh, Holy Spirit. We didn't like well, we never invited you. You never got our card. You never, you never, you never. And God started jumping. Some of you jumped into our boat. We're really glad that you did. And you've come into our boat. And you got yourself sorted out with God. Hallelujah. What a joy it is. God always keeps his promises. So let's come back to Abraham, verse 18. It says, against all hope. When we thought it wasn't going to happen. Abraham, in hope, believed that's the key are you a believer dare you believe it say oh my husband I know about your husband believe oh my wife oh believe oh my children believe it's never going to happen unless you believe faith is the key to this whole to our relationship with God and also to the miracles and the advances and the breakthroughs that we're looking for in life it's believing let me tell you, this, this thing of like, you know, the unbelief, and it's only going to lead you down one road, and it's a dead-end road. We need to just talk some faith, think some faith, act some faith, talk some faith, make plans on faith, believe faith, because without faith, the Bible says it's impossible to believe God, which means that if you are able to please God, without faith, it's impossible to please God, which means that if you've got some faith, you're going to please God. And when God's got his face smiling on you because you've been walking by faith, I tell you, he loves to show you his favor and he loves to give you the answers and he loves to make a way for you. That's why Abraham, it says here, verse 18, <coughs> Abraham in hope believed and so. Oh, that's great, isn't it? And so. And so became the father of many nations, just as it has been said to him, so shall your offspring be and without weakening in his faith, he faced the fact that his body was as good as dead since he was about 100 years old and that Sarah's womb was also dead. Yet he did not waver through unbelief regarding the promise. 
Say the word promise with me. He did not waver through unbelief regarding the promise of God, but he was strengthened in his faith and gave glory to God, being fully persuaded that God had the power to do what he had promised. Wow. And Abraham got old and saw his kids and knew that the promise of God had worked for him and that the next generation would call him father and the next generation would call him grandfather and the next generation would call him great grandfather and all the in fact even the Bible says all the nations of the earth are going to call him a father Abraham the father and God kept his promises he thought he was never going to do it but he did it and God did it in a big way God will keep his promises to you believe it it's not over <laughs> the world says it's not over till the fat lady sings well I've never met any fat ladies <laughs> not that I would ever call them God says it's not over till it's over that's why I believe that God wants to say to you today is a simple little line believe his promise believe his promise for you Believe his promise for your life. Believe your promise, be his promise for your family. You might say, oh, my marriage. Don't jack it in. Believe God. Tell my children. Don't give up on them. Hold hang. Hold firm. Oh, my health. Don't give up on his promise. Believe that he is the Lord that heals you. Oh, my finances. I'm in so much debt. I'm in such a you do what's right we even earlier in this service talked about giving to God and how that he would pour out upon us so much blessings we can't contain it you know the most well we need to give to God at all times but we definitely need to give God in the tough times because it's when you sow that you will reap and in the measure that you sow you will reap activate God's promise by faith and don't join the pity party bunch but join the praise party bunch and go and give God loads of glory have an expectation say God revival's coming hallelujah have an expectation that says oh God you're building your church strong hallelujah say oh hallelujah Lord you're adding to your church good quality people who are going to be able to handle all the growth that's coming quality leaders people of integrity people of faith people who are able to go and ah you know we've got something to prepare for yeah awesome what God's got in plan for us I know some people just want to come to church sing a couple of songs listen to a little message and go home but for all those of you that want more God's made a promise you're going to have people to talk to, people to love, people to help, people to share the gospel with, people to explain the Bible to, people to get on your knees and pray with, people to visit, people to encourage, people to say, I'll see you next Sunday and go and sit by them and encourage them. Hallelujah. People that we can go and love for Jesus' sake because his promise is going to be fulfilled for you, for your family, for your children, and for us as a church. And the greatest promise is this, that when this gospel has been preached around the world, and you helped us do that today in the offering, when it's been done proper, then Jesus said he will come again. What a great promise that is. Jesus is coming again, by the way. He is. You say, well, I, I don't think it's ever going to happen. Well, that's okay. You weren't invited to the executive meeting of heaven that said it was. And they've already decided, and he's not changing his mind, so it will happen. We just need to get ready for the day. And we need to make hay while the sun shines. We need to go and extend and advance the kingdom of God while we've got this day. This is the day of salvation. God is going to keep his promises for you, for the church. So let's get busy with it. Amen? God bless you. Thank you very much. Thank you.